Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to start my new Faves and Fails series. It's the first Faves and Fails um, video I am shooting. I've never done a video like this before. I'm so excited, really. I have um, accumulated a few products and this is technically a January Faves and Fails, but it's a lot of stuff from last year as well because i've started my project pen in january and i have been mainly focusing on those products for the most part of january so it would have been only just a few project pen stuff and yeah that's boring and i didn't make a 2019 face and fails and i think it would be a bit redundant to do one in february so i thought i'm just going to see what type of products i have been using the most in the later part of like the last quarter of 2019 and this could be my 2019 faves and fails for reference for um, at the end of the year where I'm going to make my 2020 or the looking back type of video because I think that would be fun. I am going to try to make this a monthly series because I'm noticing that I have a lot of stuff, I'm trying a lot of stuff and I am finally, I feel I feel finally knowledgeable enough to give you my opinion and solid advice on favorites and fails products. So without further ado and without making this the longest intro ever, let's jump into the video. I'm going to start with the faves um, and then I'm going to go into the fails. I have a lot of stuff. And I think I'm going to try and do this by order in when you would apply it in your, or at least in my routine. So I'm going to start off with primer products. <sighs> this primer product. It's the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It's a Shea Butter Vitamin C and E type of cream. And I have been using this all year. All year, I think I've bought it in 2018 at the end of 2018 in the holiday sales and this is the replacement of that one and i am this far this far i use this every day you don't need a lot because it's very emollient and you can spread it out um, very very easily i use this together with a little bit of a eye cream the eye cream i tend to rotate a bit and then I use my jade roller to really wake myself up before I put on my base so that is how I like to use it this for me it's just an extra moisturizer it's an extra step I love it I feel that my skin has been more clear because of this this does something to your skin. I always use a different primer after this because I use uh, primers with different capabilities or different, what's it called? Different capabilities, for lack of a better word. I don't know. I use pore filling primers. I like to do that around my uh, nose area and um, just around here and on my forehead a little bit around here. My nose really needs it because I have a very deep pore. So I use pore, min a pore minimizer or pore filling primer. <laughs> I said it. Uh, and also I like to use a primer to um, balance out my skin tone a little bit more. So that is why I also use a primer after this, but you don't need to. This stuff, love it. It's a bit expensive, but here in Holland, you can always get it on sale at some point. So if you're smart and if you're on time, look out for a sale and just buy it then because this baby will last you a very long time. You don't need a lot. This is the second one since I've been using it for a year. So I can use this. I think I don't do my makeup every day, so I don't use it every day, but let's say approximately five times a week. I use this and it takes me maybe eight to nine months to finish. So that's up to you. For another primer, as I said, I like to use a pore filling primer as well after my face base. And I use this Smashbox Photo Finish Minimize Pores Primer. This is just a mini because I wanted to try it. And I love it. I love it. For me, this is the best primer to use under any type of foundation. Every type of foundation I've used over this primer works brilliantly. And you know I have trouble applying foundation to my nose and looking nice because it always looks like textured or bubbly or stuff like this. 
this really helps i love it and i don't get very oily also on my nose after using this i must say i am not an oily girl or not an oily type uh, i don't have oily skin that is what i want to say i don't have oily skin um but yeah you can get a little bit oily if it's even i can get a little bit oily if i use something that is you know too fat or too oily i don't know this doesn't do that i love it okay what i'm going for next i think i'm going to go into foundation i have two foundations i have a drugstore option or at least a drugstore option is physician's formula i don't really think drugstore is like it's not a very cheap product i think for drugstore you know uh prices but i love this i have seen ellie Gleans, Gleans, I never know how to pronounce her name. I'm just going to call her Ellie. I've seen Ellie use this a lot. She loves it. She really, really loves it. I have heard that it's maybe going out of their collection. So let's pray it won't. This is something I can't really get to very easily in Holland, but I found it in Madrid, in Spain, when I was there with my family. I saw it and I just grabbed it. There was only one of this shade left. I have the LN3. I think that would say light neutral in N3. It matches me almost perfectly. I love it. It sits so nicely on my skin. You don't see, or at least for me, it's not enhancing my pores. It's very hydrating. I have um, um, a little bit more of a drier skin in winter uh, and normal skin in summer. So I'm never really oily. I have heard, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've been sick. This is the first time I can film again, so my voice may sound a little bit weird, but I'm getting through it. Um, yeah, I've heard some people say that because of they uh, because of the fact that they have oily skin, it doesn't really work on them because it breaks up earlier. For me, this lasts all day. It sits so nice. It looks really natural, and yeah, I just really love it. And I love the fact that this um, this shade is really matching my skin so well. So yeah, I am in love with this one. And then also what I really like to use still is the Dior Backstage. If I'm like, okay, I want something simple that works fast, that is not like a cake on my face, then I always reach for this one. The shade is really uh, is a really good match for me. It's a two neutral. It's not necessarily, not necessarily a very light coverage, but you won't get it up to full. You won't. It will go to medium max. But I love it this it makes my skin look so natural i don't really have to set it because if i use my i normally i would just use my brush to blend it in or just to brush it on my skin and then i would blend it in with my beauty blender take some take off some excess product if there's any and then i don't really have to set it and i really like that because yeah i don't know powders can really make me a bit dry looking so yeah so this one has been a foundation i have been reaching for all year and um, i'm still in love with it then i'm going to powder i was saying powder is not a very easy thing for me um most powders look <coughs> because i <coughs> because i have a slightly drier skin powders can really age my skin and make it look a little bit too textured and that is not a good look but i have found one like in the type of setting powder type of powders and this is that is this one it's the fenty beauty one it's the pro filter and it's in the shade butter i bought this in london when i was at a boots store over there and i saw a mini and i wanted to try it because if i'm going to try a powder knowing how it can behave on my skin i always want to try a mini first if i can because if i have to commit to a full size and it's not working that's just a waste of product product and a waste of money so i always try to find a mini so i saw this i grabbed it because i saw a lot of people rave about it and i also really really love it the thing i like about it most is that it really blurs your skin so the pores i use it here i just use a smaller brush this one i just use a smaller brush i use this brush to set my under eye and i set uh, around here and I'm telling you, if I put this over this area, it just looks airbrushed. So I like to um, use this 
powder really as a setting powder. I don't use it as a buffing powder because then I feel like it's it could be the brush, but it's just, you know, disrupting my makeup a little bit and it's looking, um, you know, like powder on my skin the way I don't like to see the powder on my skin. But if I, you know, just stamp it in or just press it in with either a puff or just the brush, but not in a buffing motion, this makes my skin look really, really pretty. So I am glad I found this. If I'm going to run through it, I am going to buy the full size for sure, but I still have a lot left, so I will be good. Then a powder I do like for buffing is a classic. It's the Guerlain Meteorites. I think this is just a standard one. I'm just going to see if it has a shade name. Oh yeah, it's in the two light. Uh, and it's these little balls. Mm. You know, you know, you had these little keychain things like the shoes or the little puppets and it has this very strong violet, like floral violet scent. This is what this smells like. And I love it. I know a lot of people hate the scent. I totally understand, but I love it. Mm, it feels really luxe to me. And what I do, I use this brush. I'm sorry, I have an itchy nose. I use this brush. This is the Equitils one. It's um, the sheer powder. Well, do I need to say more? And it's, it's very soft, as you can see. And... Um, I don't know what the sound is, and I'm sorry, but I'm just going to continue. I just swirl, swirl, I just swirl the brush in here and buff it lightly over my skin. And what I love about this is that it um, it helps to blend out my um, bronzer and my blush and my highlighter. It makes it look more natural, makes it look more blended, and it gives this very I don't know if I would say glow, but some type of glow, some life back to the skin. I love these. I love these. They have been on my wish list forever. And I'm so glad I finally got them and that I'm loving them because that would be a disappointment. Then I'm going over to bronzers. And this is one I got from my dear friend in friend mail from Kate. Kate is a lovely, lovely YouTuber. And she has an Instagram and she's a lovely lady from, I believe she's from Scotland. She has this very nice accent. I love her. And we, we shared, I think it was this summer, we exchanged boxes with nice makeup from here and from uh, Scotland, England. And yeah, that was so much fun. And she put this in there. This bronzer is the perfect tone for me. It's not too dark. It's not too um, like reddish orange. It's not too cool either. It's just a perfect match for my skin. It blends out beautifully, beautifully. It's not too pigmented, so you don't, I, I can go in with a heavy hand. I don't have to be too scared. I love this stuff. It's in the shade Golden Sand number. Yeah, it's, a, it's the number seven bronzer in Golden Sand. I'm going to link um, Kate's uh, channel down below and the video where I unpack this baby. Then also a different type of product when it comes to bronzer. So I'm just putting away my phone. Is this Milk one. It's the, what's it called? The matte bronzer in a stick form and it's in the shade Baked. I also got this when I was in Madrid with my family and my gosh, this is so stunning. I just draw a stripe here, a stripe there, a few here, a few here. Blend it out. You can use your sponge. You can use a brush. It blends out like a dream. And the shade is perfection for my skin. It gives it a bit of a contour, but not too much. But also this nice bronzy, the same as the number seven. Not too sunny, not too orange on me, not too warm on me because I don't really like it. It's just warm and natural. I love this stuff. I I haven't put it down really since I got it. So yeah, that's saying something. Then for blush, I also have two types of products for blush. The first one is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude blush. I, I just, I have to say it's not necessarily this shade. This is the Bellini Brunch. It's just this format it's just this formula i love it and i love the colors the colors are this is just like a more orangey peachy and i also have a more mauvey pink one. Oh, i put it on today 
it's not very visible with these bright lights, but it's really, really stunning in real life. It's just a very, they're pigmented, but they're not too pigmented. So you can build it up if you want to. They really blend out like a dream, to be honest. And I just like the tones of it. It's really natural. It's really what you would expect from Bare Minerals. So I'm so glad I picked this up. I am going to pick up more shades, I think. I just have this and um, the other one, the pinker one, in love. I love this formula. Then also, I have a cream product um, for my blush as well. And this is the one by Almost Beauty. I got the shade, of, mm, this is such a fun shade. I got the shade Coral Peach. And well, as you can see, it's very corally, very orangey toned. I love this. I just love this. I mainly use this brush for it. It's clean now, but I use my Refer P11A. I have P11A. I have no idea which one this is, I think. Is it the four? I'm not even going to try. I think it's in the Bespoke collection, but this is just a very nice, soft little brush. And I use this to um, blend out all my cream um, products, well, mainly my cream blushes. I love this. I got this on recommendation from Tati because Tati was raving about it. And I really love this shade. I think I bought this in summer. And I, I really used it a lot. The only thing I don't really like, and I'm going to show you, is that it gets, can, can you see that? That it gets a little bit grimy because there's hairs and stuff in there. And, well, not hair, but like fuzzies. That is the only thing I don't really like about this type of uh, packaging. But yeah, I really love, 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 love this formula. It blends out like a dream. I love the color. It's such a sweet, fun, mostly, I think mostly for spring and summer, but yeah, I really, really love this, um, this uh, formula. So I think I'm going to get more than, or I think I'm going to get this one in other shades as well. Oh, I forgot a primer. <laughs> Dang it. I forgot a priming product. This is the Benefit Bravo. I think this might be my third. Um, and I already have a backup. This stuff I've been using, I think for, well, at least over a year now. And so this is really just a favorites uh, for 2019 because I've used it every day or every time I use my, or I did my makeup, sorry. And sometimes if I didn't do my makeup but I wanted to, um, yeah, get my brows in place a little bit, then I use this as well. And it really made a difference um, for my product adhering to my brow. But also if you use this um, longer or on a long time, uh, long-term period, that is what I wanted to say, long-term period, then it really does something to your brow hairs. My brows are definitely more full than they were when I started this. So yeah, make that, um, make out of that what you will, but I really love this product. Then I have just a random thing. Um, this is a corrector wand. I have um, quite dark under eyes or quite deep set, um, I don't know how to really explain it, but I this part of my eye is naturally a little bit more sunken. So a little bit more dark and just to bring it, you know, forward a little bit. I like to correct it because it's also a little bit purplish uh, um, in, in color tone. So I like to just put a little bit of this stuff on there and then it really brightens up that whole area. And yeah, I've been using this since I've got it every day, really. This is from Douglas. It's their own um, brand. I really like this formula because it's like, it's firm enough to, you know, stay put, but it's emollient enough to really blend it out. And I think the shade is perfect for me. It's not too peach or too orange, but it has enough color to it to make sure that something happens to that area. Love this. Um, then I have, uh, going into eyeshadow, I have one mono eyeshadow that is just a classic. This one. It's the MAC Nylon in a single eyeshadow. And I love this one to brighten up my inner corner. Or if I have a darker shade that I brought back too far to my uh, inner corner, I just put this over it and it makes it lighter. It makes it stand out. And I also like it very much for my brow. It is quite um, bright. So yeah, you have to um, dare to get to this, but yeah, look at it. It's so nice. 
I really like it. So this is just, I think, a handy one to have in your uh, stash to have a nice eyeshadow to brighten your inner corner and highlight your brow bone or correct stuff on your eyes or eyeshadows on your eyes when it gets a little bit too dark because somehow the shade it's icy and it has a very pale gold um, undertone but it's so slight that it's almost very neutral so you can really pair this with any almost any color so i just love to have this in my stash it's, it's a very handy product to have then for eyeshadow palettes i was like okay what is my true favorite at the moment? Because I have been using a lot of eyeshadows and a lot of eyeshadow palettes, but what is the one that if I get up and I have to do my makeup and I have to reach for my product project pen stuff and I'm like, okay, if I could reach for something else, then what would it be? And it's this one. It is this one. This palette is so easy for me to use, really. You um, can really make some quick looks. I can always make something different. It's not too bold, but you can make it bold if you want. The effects of the glitters are so much fun. So if you want to do something else, just, you know, spice up your look a little bit, then you can use the sequin row of the, or sorry, the glitter row. I think the sequin row is something I still have to discover a little bit because they're matte but they're not and i am still figuring out um how to use them to make them a little bit more special um so yeah this is for me at the moment really my favorite eyeshadow palette and i didn't want to pull like five eyeshadow palettes telling you all about it this is just at the moment my favorite the one i always want to reach for even though i have to put something else on my face because i'm doing a project pen I can't wait to see what she comes out with next, um, um, you know, in, in a palette product because the blender full. Maybe I will get it, but you know, that is not really screaming to me. But the palette, the palette is amazeballs. Okay, and I've also restrained myself a little bit when it comes to, or a lot really, when it comes to lip products. I have two. Um, I want to start off with this one. This is the uh, D is D. This is the um, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Farm. <sighs> Need I say more? Need I say more? This is a stunning shade, stunning tone, and the formula is also very unique i think it's matte but it's comfortable it's not like a blotted lip but it feels a little bit like that and it you know looks a little bit like that but i just i love it and what i love most about it yeah magnetic closure so much fun so much fun so yeah this is one of my favorites i have the um other ones, I have a few from the Reds, I have a few from their, from her Spring Collection, also very nice. But this one, I just want to reach for, especially with the Tati Beauty um, palette. Oh my god, it's such a stunning combination. But because I am not really a total matte fan, I also am reaching for this one. And I know there are a lot of people who are saying that it dries down or it has a drying effect on their lips, but it doesn't for me at all. And I really like the fact that it smells stunning, like tropical fruits or something. I really like the shade. It's this one. I'm not flipping you off, I promise. It's so easy. It's just, it's a crayon. So you, you know, you smack it on very easily. You put it in your purse. It has a very nice closure because if I want to take this off, oh, you're not helping me prove my point, but sometimes it can be really sticky. But you have these little rings. Yeah, in the cap, I hope you can see. You have these little rings and they uh, grip onto the um, rings on the crayon as well. So it stays closed and it stays hydrating. And for me, it's just a very nice smooth glidey texture and i love the shade i also have another one but it's still over there because i still have to fill my hole i am going to do that after this video so yeah i can finally dig into the stuff seriously i've been waiting way too long for that but yeah 
I love this. I am going to see if I want it in more colors, but I don't want to like get them all or something like that. I want to um, see what I would use for the season and maybe have one or two of these in a color that is appropriate to the season. This is something that I think is very easy um, for like winter because it has a more of a brownish tinge to it. And I have one that is even a little bit more deep, I believe. So yeah, I think um, that is nice. But coming spring, I want something that is more corally, more maybe a little bit more pink and also going into summer. So I think I am going to try and restrain myself and have like one or two per season and per season, you know, spring, summer, you can use the same as in fall and winter. Okay, those were my favorites. So I have a few fills and I'm going over them now. Funny thing, it's mostly foundation. I have literally like three foundations here. The first one, and I... I don't think I'm going to really say it is a fill as much as I will say that it's a disappointment to me. The Bare Minerals... Um, foundation or their powder foundation thing the original one i have it in golden fair 04 it's a good shade for me but this stuff it's so finicky i have to i don't know how to work with it yet i think i am going to try and pan it and um, after i have finished one of the foundations that is in there right now i am going to try and pan it then because yeah yeah i have this it's almost full it's almost full and i think I should be able to make it work, but I've been trying and trying and trying and it doesn't look nice because powder doesn't really look nice on my skin. And I know I have to really buff it in, but if I buff it in too much, I am going to exfoliate my skin or something. I don't know, but it it gets textured. Mm, it's just annoying. It's just annoying and a disappointment. That is like what it is. Then something that was just plain bad. Oh, it made a noise. <laughs> I think it got mad at me for saying that. Um, I got, I have two because I have different shades. I have tried three shades right now, up to now, from this foundation. And I think you would be surprised, you know, to see this in a fills. But I don't like this. It looks, it just, it sits weird on my skin. It's patchy on my skin. It doesn't um, wear off very nicely. I don't know. I don't really like this stuff. I have tried I have been trying to pan these because, you know, I wanted to really make them work. And I took a, uh, I bought a shade that was a bit dark because this is, you know, perfect for me in summer. This is too light for me always. But if I pair it with this one, it is um, good, you know, for right now for my winter shade. I had a lighter one than this one, than the 130. I don't even know why, what I was thinking with that one, but that just like horrible so i gave it to a colleague of mine and these are going to go the same route i'm just going to see if someone else likes them because i can't make them work on my skin really and i've tried guys i've tried i've tried different primers i tried different powders i've tried not setting it i've tried it all it doesn't work for me sadly because everyone is you know raving about it and then this one this is the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Radiance Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. I don't know. I've used this twice. And maybe I should give it a little bit more of a chance. But this is just funky. I can't get it to work. It's not like this that it... You know, if I put on these, in the beginning it looks okay. So if I would film a video, I could use this. But I'm not going to be bothered because I have a lot of other stuff that I could use. So I'm just going to give this to a new home. But this, this just doesn't work, period. I put it on, it looks funny. I leave it on, maybe it has to, you know, settle into my skin, something like that. Doesn't work. For me, this doesn't work. I have it in the shade F6. So that should be, you know, shade matching. It's it's fine. My shade is fine. But I don't know. It sits really weird, weird on my skin. It collects in my pores. I have texture. I don't know. It, it yeah, it makes me look... Well, not airbrushed, that's one thing, but you know, no, just no, I don't like it. Then I have something that um, is also more in a, no, no, it's a fill, it's a fill. I got these uh, stick blushes and highlighter this year. I got a bundle, I think, I don't know what, which one it was. I had two blushes and this 
um, highlighter. This is in the one Star Bright. Yeah, Star Bright. Looks like this. You would say it would work. You know, I don't think it's a bad shade. It has a very nice gleam to it. But somehow this just want, doesn't want to blend into my skin. So I have like a highlight of, or a highlight, a highway of highlight on my skin. It doesn't want to blend. So this is something, yeah, I don't know. I am going to see if I can try it any other way. But a highlight, I really would love it to just sink into my skin and not look crazy like this. Maybe I can use it underneath foundation, but it's very, I don't know. I think it's too oily for that, so I think it will move. And it has these, I don't know if I can show you properly, but it has these sparkles in it. I'm not for it. No, no. And I was really, you know, looking forward to these. So what happened? Yeah. So yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in that one. And I, this is the last fill I have. It's, it's the Marc Jacobs um, What's Gold. Fine liner, ultra skinny gel eye crayon, and I have it in the shade. It's a blue one, submarine or submarine in the air, no, not air quotes in the brackets. Okay, this thing, the thing is, I got it because everybody loves it, everybody was raving about it. Especially because you can tide line or put it in your waterline very well. It's stays put. It looks gorgeous. I don't know. It does. It does stay in your waterline. But I like to line my eyes as well. Just, you know, on my, uh, just above my lash line. Not just tight. Not just tight line or only tight line. And it, it skips or something. It's like, it is very... It's kind of a tough texture. It doesn't really glide on. Maybe I have a bad one. Could also be the case. But I, what I heard about it is that it really glides on your eyes. It sticks. It stays. It's pretty. It stays pretty. It stays all day. And it does when it's on. But I have to work really hard to put this on properly. I have to use a uh, angled brush. I use my, I think this is Sigma. E Sigma. The Sigma E65, I use this brush mainly. I put it on and then with the, um, uh, with the brush, I tried to correct it and make a smooth line because I can't make a smooth line with this. Am I doing something wrong? Please let me know, please. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Why is everybody raving about this one? It's expensive. It's Marc Jacobs. So why? Please tell me. I like the tip because it's really, really thin. But tell me, tell me. Please enlighten me. And then for my last fill, I hope I didn't say that with the Marc Jacobs thing, but for my last fill, why is everybody raving about this brick of a sponge? This thing is so dang hard. It's like a stress ball. I can use it as a stress ball or I can use it, you know, to tighten my muscles in my arms. Seriously, this thing, even though you wet it, it doesn't really matter. It is so firm. It's like hitting yourself with a brick when you use your foundation or use this to apply your foundation. I don't get it. Please enlighten me about this one. I don't get it. I don't get why everybody's raving about this. Okay, I know it's Morphe, so probably a lot of Morphe affiliates are um, raving about this, but really? Are we like, ding, ding, ding? are we preferring that? Are we preferring to be, you know, hit by bricks or stuff like that? Even the Real Techniques one isn't this firm. And that one is kind of hard, in my opinion, as well. So yeah, this is just my new stress ball. And um, it's not going near my face anymore. Okay, guys, that was it from me when it comes to face and fills. I hope you liked this video. Leave me down below a comment on what you think of these products. Did I... Um, have some fills that you love or did I have some faves that you hate or are we on the same page? Let me know. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts down below. So please leave your comments down there. I love to chat with you down in the comment section. So um, yeah, please leave me a little tidbit on there. Then please also give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. My swatches are still on. <laughs> and um, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope that I will see you in my next video. Bye.